Now, WGEM Sports Extra with sports director Tony Cornish Jr. Um, I see some athletes. Uh, they're not very big, but they uh, definitely are pretty quick. They like to move with our motion, so we uh, definitely got to keep them on their toes. Yes, on the toes indeed, Palmyra quarterback Brody Landbauer just sharing his keen insight on the Monroe City D unit earlier this week. Good evening, and thanks for joining us for week 12 of the high school football season. Can you believe it? Yeah, it's week 12 in the Show Me State. Five of our tri-state area teams, in fact, were vying for four district championships on this football Friday night. The first game here at home featured a rivalry matchup that goes back a few decades. Yes, I'm referring to the Monroe City Palmyra rivalry. Two groups of Panthers sporting different colors, but a lot of pride. They were all back on the gridiron in this class two district six spotlight this evening. Two, uh, two very proud and respected programs, might add, colliding at PHS, where the 2020 district six crown to be precise was on the line. It was a big evening for both squads and Coach Miles and Coach Kirby sure Kirby shake hands before the kickoff with both of the quarterbacks serving as captains. Both squads locked in and focused. First play of the game for MCHS. That's Joshua Tolton on the move. Number 11 going for the big gain in the first down. 21 yards. Move those chains. Monroe City offense geared up early. A couple of plays later, it's first and goal and MC goes to sophomore running back. Yeah, that's Cretan Pennywell and he's in for the touch. Monroe City would go for two and they give the pigskin to Tolton again on the sweep and JT will find the paint easily. Monroe City takes an eight zip lead early. After a Palmyra three and out, Monroe City with the ball here looking to move the ball through the air. Quarterback Kyle Hayes throws it to the wrong man though. It's Palmyra's Braden Madden on the INT. Look at the big fella run. Madden takes off and picks up a few yards and Palmyra fans loving it. But that would set up a handoff here to Ross Arch and Mr. Arch goes through a hole and he is gone. Off to the races, 35 yard touchdown strike. Arch puts Palmyra on the board. Instead of going for two, Coach Miles sends out the PAT crew and Monroe City breaks through and gets the block. MCHS still leading eight to six, but Palmyra's offense would keep rolling. Watch quarterback Brody Leyenbauer, the Clarence Karen Conference Offensive Player of the Year, takes off as he's flushed out of the pocket, throws it deep to Colin Arch and yell, he'll get the foot in, no instant replay needed. That's a great play. Great reception by Arch. Palmyra is moving into Monroe City territory. A couple plays later, they hand it off to who else? Ross Arch here. Arch gets in the end zone for a second touchdown of the night. Palmyra would go for two, but would not get it, making it a 12A game. Monroe City trying to get something going in the first half. They air it out here, but it's going to be Colin Arch on the INT. This guy's everywhere. The Arch parents in the stands must have been celebrating tonight. Colin Arch would be rewarded for his tough play there on the ensuing drive. Leyenbauer drops back and finds Mr. Arch on the slant, and that's another Palmyra touchdown. Monroe City started to come back in this contest, but it wasn't enough this evening as Palmyra goes on to win 26 to 22 over MCHS to lock up their very first district title since 2015 and in case you didn't know the Panthers of Palmyra High are now 11 and 0 on the season. What a great matchup for more insight on this evening's class two district six title tilt that fans will be talking about for quite some time. Let's head back to the Flower City and check in with WGM's Garantias with our WGM Sports post game report. Garrett. I'm joined here by senior offensive and defensive lineman Weston King and Weston, it's your senior year, and you got the district championship against one of your biggest rivals. How do you feel right now? Uh, ecstatic. I mean, everybody came out here and played their hearts off, even them, and it just feels really good that we came out here and uh, played as a good group and uh, got this win. And you had a couple sacks on defense, but obviously the offense was rolling for you guys too. So, I mean, on the line, how did it look out there? What, what helped you out so much getting that push and be able to get and infiltrate that, their offensive line? Um, just everybody doing their job too. I mean, when they got to worry about uh, everybody on the line uh, uh, getting back there in the backfield, it makes uh, everybody's job a heck of a lot easier. So, um, really, I can thank the other guys and just, uh, just everybody having that motor and uh, just getting back there. And uh, we all played as a team and swarmed and punish. And, uh, I think it showed. And what was your kind of your guys' group message going into the day? Obviously, second time playing Monroe City, sorry, playing a rival twice. So, I mean, what was your kind of message going into today's game? Um, just one of them was uh, this is the last time you play Monroe City and or as a senior in your life. So, uh, what do you want to remember it as? Uh, so, let's go out here and give it it all and uh, leave everything out here on the field. And I feel like we all did that, and uh, the the scoreboard showed that. And now you move on after district. You got sectionals, regionals next. Everything could play awesome. But what's the 
sky limit for this team? Um, as, as far as we want it to go, I mean, we, uh, I think we are the only team that can beat ourselves. So uh, as long as we keep uh, pushing and doing uh, what we can do, I think we got a real good shot of uh, taking this thing all the way. Awesome. Thank you, Weston. No good game tonight. Thank you. Reporting from Palmyra, Tony, back to you. Thanks a lot, Gary. That celebration didn't really say it all. Wow. A truly great effort, though, displayed by both teams tonight on this football Friday night in Palmyra. Our congratulations goes out to MCHS on a great season as well. Meanwhile, Hannibal head football coach Quentin Hamner was not on the sidelines this evening during tonight's Class 4 District 4 championship game against the Spartans of Moberly High. Now, Hannibal High Activities Director Clint Graham confirmed with me earlier today that the second year field general at HHS would indeed be absent from tonight's district title game due to, quote, personal reasons. Now, no additional information was offered. Jason Nolan was appointed to serve as interim head coach for the Pirates for tonight's contest on the road. WGM Sports contacted Coach Hamner earlier today as well, and he also confirmed that he would not be present at the district championship game. He also stated that he did, uh, he also indicated to me that he expects to, quote, hopefully be back next week. We will keep you up to date. Meanwhile, the players at Hannibal High found out that Coach Hamner would not be on the sidelines tonight as they boarded their team buses bound from Overly High. I'm sure that added a little extra fire to the belly of the second seeded Pirates as they prepare to butt heads once again against top seeded Moberly for the second time this season. A very cool night at Spartan Stadium. Both teams poised and ready to go in this rematch. A winner go home scenario for both clubs. Opening kickoff, watch Pirates sophomore Markel Humphrey, just a sophomore on the move here at the 12 yard line. Markel puts on a couple moves on those Spartans and watch that nice stiff arm. Did you see it? Humphrey picks up 60 plus yards on the return down the left sideline before he's knocked out at about the 30 yard line. Great special teams play. Pirate Nation loving the effort. Pirates would capitalize here. Junior quarterback Cortland Watson hands it off to senior Damian French who punches it in for the 12 yard score. He's a load. Hannibal would miss the extra point. Pirates lead six zip, but they strike first and uh, just under 11 minutes to play in the first quarter. They're on the board and pretty happy about it. In the uh, early part of the second quarter, score tied at six, fourth down. Pirates go to, to the air. Watson rolls to his right and connects there with Aeneas Williams, just a freshman, nine-yard touchdown. Extra point is good. Pirates up 13-6. to six. Watson has it going early, checking off all those injury concerns. Good to see him in the lineup. Later in the quarter, it's French getting at the rock again in the red zone, and he takes it in for an eight-yard touchdown score, making it look easy. Pirates offense in full gear tonight in the first half. Pirates would lead 34 to 6 at the halftime break. And when this one is all said and done, your final after Ford MHS Hannibal wins 48 to 13 over Mobley High. Pirates are now 8 and 2 on the season and 5 and 0 oh, playing on the road so far in 2020. Damian French, four rushing touchdowns tonight. Quarterback Cortland Watson had three touchdowns through the air. Yeah, a total team effort. For more on tonight's Class 4 District 4 championship game, let's check in now with WGM's Richard Denson in Moberly. Rich? I'm here at Dr. Larry K. Nolan Spartan Stadium, and what a win it was for the Hannibal Pirates. Joining with me is the acting head coach for tonight, Jason Nolan, because Coach Quentin Hemner could not be with the team tonight. Coach, obviously a big victory, big playoff victory. You got the win in the rematch, 48-14. How do you feel? Oh, it's great. The great, uh, the great for the kids, great for the community. You get to play them over league again. You know, they won conference this year, and uh, we, we were pretty focused all week on making sure we knew exactly our, our – our plan and, and uh, taking care of business. Coach, you guys hit them in the mouth early. I mean, you just kept scoring and scoring. First you got the uh, score, then they scored, but then it just seems like you all went on a run. Just talk about some of the keys to how you were able to hit them in the mouth early. Well, I think big, the biggest thing is we played clean. You know, we didn't put the ball in the dirt uh, on the ground um, like we did the first game, and we were able to just play our game because we're, we're a pretty good football team when, when we're taking care of our keys and, and, and taking care of what we need to take care of. Keep going and keep churning. The Hannibal Pirates are your district champions. Reporting in Moberly, Missouri, Richard Denson, WGEM Sports. Thanks a lot, Richard. Certainly appreciate that. What a great effort displayed by the Hannibal Pirates tonight, playing once again on the road without their head coach. Let's move on now to the Class 1 District 2 title game in Moken, Missouri. That's where second-seeded Mark Twain, how about those Tigers, facing top-seeded South Callaway. Tigers standout Evan Torrance, uh, he started things off the right way for MTHS. NTSHS. He entered the game here on the 5-5 five five slate they did. The Bulldogs were sporting a 6-3 record, playing at home. Nice carry there. South Callaway Sam Buckner, though, with the carry here right into the end zone. Bulldogs take a 7-zip lead in the second quarter. Watch the Tigers on the 
move here. They're going to give it to Landon Moss, who has a big run here for Mark Twain, looking to get on the board before the half. That's tough running right there, driving downfield. One last shot before the half for Mark Twain. They're going to go with Connor Eckler. He'll shuffle around before delivering a long pass that would unfortunately, yeah, you guessed it, get intercepted by SCHS. Tigers trailed seven to zip at the halftime break. Tough night for Mark Twain tonight as they fall to defeat after four quarters of action. 26 to six, Lakota Preston reeled in a touchdown reception late in the fourth quarter to get the Tigers on the board to avoid the shutout. Mark Twain closes out their 2020 campaign on the turf at five and six to eight man district two we go southwest Livingston hosting North Shelby these two teams met last year in the district title game start off with the Raiders on their opening drive North Shelby's Kale Stoneburner out of the gun on the option pitches to Justin Lunsford who gets a block and keeps the drive moving that's a great effort later in the drive Stoneburner drops back and sets up a middle screen to Justin Lunsford and it's a foot race to the end zone this guy's got speed Lunsford gets in for six North Shelby up six zip early we're still in the first First quarter, Wildcats on the drive. We're going to check in on Wes Hughes. He's a talented young man on the quarterback keeper here. Hughes will zig and zag his way through the Raider defense and score to tie this game up at six. Number seven's got some wheels in the second quarter. Southwest was able to create some separation. Mr. Hughes back in the spotlight. This time he'll drop back to pass and connect with Parker Kenny in the end zone for a quick six. Raiders trail 26 to six at the break. Your final after four in this one, North Shelby, unfortunately, falling on the road tonight, 34 to 22 against the Wildcats to close out their season. That will bring this football Friday night edition of Sports Extra to a close. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Tony Cornish Jr. On behalf of the entire WGM sports team and a cast of thousands working oh so hard behind the scenes, thanks for joining us. And as always, go out and have a safe night.